Good morning, Pray First. It is June the 28th, 2021, and it is Monday morning. A bright, beautiful, sort of muggy Monday morning. And I'm Brandy Bell, and I'm so excited to be with you on this Monday. Hello, Christine. If you are tuning in right now, I ask you to just come on in. We are reading through the Bible in the message translation for clarity and for simplicity simplicity but it's not really simple necessarily um, it's challenging the Bible is definitely challenging and it's intended to do so to you know make us into better people um, more a better reflection of our Lord Jesus and so man we all need that don't we I know I do well come on in hashtag live if you're live with us at the seven o'clock hour, hashtag recorded if you are at any other time. And let us know by dropping um, a comment down below where you're coming from, where you're at right now. If you're in uh, the Mid-South, the Memphis Mid-South area, North Mississippi, then just let us know that. That's where I am. And if you're somewhere else, just let us know that. It's super cool to see where everyone is from. Um, and right now, if you will hit the likes and the hearts, um, just keep them going rapid fire that is letting everyone know that they are welcome and we are so glad that they are here I would do it but I can't because <laughs> I'm on this side of the camera but anyway hello Michelle <clears throat> um, and finished yesterday in 1st Thessalonians 1 sitting or not yesterday that was Friday I apologize um, and I'm gonna pick up at chapter 2 this morning and see exactly uh, how far we are going to get. Do you have your coffee? I have mine. And it's really good. It's hazelnut. What kind of coffee do you drink? Okay. Are y'all ready? Because I am. I say that and then I have to pause again. <laughs> Alright, here we go. First says... First Thessalonians chapter 2. So friends, it's obvious that our visit to you was no waste of time. We had just given rough treatment. We had just been given rough treatment in Philippi, as you know, but that didn't slow us down. We were sure of ourselves in God and went right ahead and said our peace, presenting God's message to you, defiant of the opposition. God tested us thoroughly to make sure we were qualified to be trusted with this message. Be assured that when we speak to you, we're not after crowd approval, only God's approval. Since we've been put through that battery of tests, you're guaranteed that both me, we and the message are free of error, mixed motives, or hidden agendas. We never used words to butter you up. No one knows that better than you. And God knows we never used words as a smokescreen to take advantage of you. Even though we had some standing as Christ's apostles, we never threw our weight around or tried to come across as important with you or anyone else. We weren't standoffish with you. We took you just as you were. We were never patronizing, never condescending, but we cared for you the way a mother cares for her children. We loved you dearly. Not content to just pass on the message, we wanted to give you our hearts. And we did. You remember us in those days, friends, working our fingers to the bone, up half the night moonlighting so you wouldn't have the burden of supporting us while we proclaimed God's message to you. You saw with your own eyes how discreet and courteous we were among you, with keen sensitivity to you as fellow believers. And God knows we weren't freeloaders. You experienced it all firsthand. With each of you, we were like a father with his child, holding your hand, whispering encouragement, showing you step by step how to live well before God, who called us into his kingdom, into this delightful life. And now we look back on all this and thank God, a geyser of thanks. When you got the message of God we preached, you didn't pass it off as just one more human opinion, but you took it to heart as God's true word to you, which it is, God himself at work in you believers. Friends, do you realize that you followed in the exact footsteps of the churches of God in Judea, 
those who were the first to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, you got the same bad treatment from your countrymen as they did from theirs. The Jews who killed the master Jesus to say nothing of the prophets and followed it up by running us out of town. They make themselves offensive to God and everyone else by trying to keep us from telling people who've never heard of our God how to be saved. They've made a career of opposing God and have gotten mighty good at it. But God is fed up, ready to put an end to it. Do you have any idea how very homesick we became for you? Dear friends, even though it hadn't been that long and it was only our bodies that were separated from you, not our hearts, we tried our very best to get back to see you. You can't imagine how much we missed you. I, Paul, tried over and over to get back, but Satan thwarted us each time. Who do you think we're going to be? Who do you think we're going to be proud of when our master Jesus appears if it's not you? You're our pride and joy. Chapter 3. So when we couldn't stand being separated from you any longer and could find no way to visit you ourselves, we stayed in Athens and sent Timothy to get you up and about, cheering you on so you wouldn't be discouraged by these hard times. He's a brother and companion in the faith. God's man is spreading the message, preaching Christ. Not that the trouble should come as any surprise to you. You've always known that we're in this for... the we're in for this kind of thing. It's part of our calling. When we were with you, we made it quite clear that there was trouble ahead, and now that it's happened, you know what it's like. That's why I couldn't quit worrying. I had to know for myself how you were doing in the faith. I didn't want the tempter getting to you and tearing down everything we had built up together. But now that Timothy is back, bringing this terrific report of, on your faith and love, we feel a lot better. It's especially gratifying to know that you continue to think well of us and that you want to see us as much as we want to see you. In the middle of our trouble and hard times here, just knowing you, how you're doing keeps us going. Knowing that your faith is alive keeps us alive. What would be an adequate thanksgiving to offer God for all the joy we experienced before him because of you? We do what we can, praying away night and day, asking for the bonus of seeing your faces again and doing what we can to help when your faith falters. May God our Father himself and our Master Jesus clear the road to you and may the Master pour on the love so it fills your lives and splashes over on everyone around you, just as it does from us to you. May you be infused with strength and purity, filled with confidence in the presence of God our Father when our Master Jesus arrives with all his followers. Chapter 4. One final word, friends. We ask you, urge you is more like it, that you keep on doing what you told us, nope, what we told you to do to please God, not in a dogged religious plod, but in a life-spirited dance. You know the guidelines we laid out for you from the Master Jesus. God wants you to live a pure life. Keep yourselves from sexual promiscuity. Learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body not abusing it, as is so common among those who know nothing of God. Don't run roughshod over the concerns of your brothers and sisters. Their concerns are God's concerns, and He will take care of them. We've warned you about this before. God hasn't invited us into a disorderly, grungy life, but into something holy and beautiful, as beautiful on the inside as the outside. If you disregard this advice, you're not offending your neighbors. You're rejecting God, who is making you a gift of His Holy Spirit. Regarding life together and getting along with each other, you don't need me to tell you what to do. You're God-taught in these matters. Just love one another. You're already good at it. Your friends all over the province of Macedonia are evidence. Keep it up. Get better and better at it. Stay calm. Mind your own business. Do your own job. You've heard all this from us before, but a reminder never hurts. We want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders, not lying around sponging off your friends. And regarding the question, friends, that has come up about what happens to those already dead and buried, we don't want you in the dark any longer. First off, you must not care carry on over them like people who have nothing to look forward to as if the grave were the last word 
Since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. And then this, we can tell you with complete confidence, we have the master's word on it, that when the master comes again to get us, those of us who are still alive will not get a jump on the dead and leave them behind. In actual fact, they'll be ahead of us. The master himself will give the command, Archangel Thunder, God's trumpet blast. He'll come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise. They'll go first. Then the rest of us who are still alive at the time will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the master. Oh, we'll be walking on air. And then there will be one huge family reunion with the master. So reassure one another with these words. I don't think, friends, that I need to deal with the question of when all this is going to happen. You know as well as I that the day of the master's coming can't be posted on our calendars. <laughs> Ooh, that could be written directly to me because <laughs> I love my calendar. Okay, and that distracted me. Where did it go? Okay, there it is. <laughs> he won't call ahead and make an appointment. <laughs> oh, mercy. He won't call ahead and make an appointment any more than a burglar would. About the time everybody's walking around complacently, congratulating each other, we've sure got it made. Now we can take it easy. Suddenly, everything will fall apart. It's going to come as suddenly and inescapably as birth pangs to a pregnant woman. But friends, you're not in the dark. So how could you be taken off guard by any of this? You're sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk through life like, the, like others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. People sleep at night and get drunk at night, but not us. Since we're creatures of day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight sober, dressed up in faith, love, and the hope of salvation. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by our master, Jesus Christ. He died for us, a death that triggered life. Wow, a death that triggered life. Whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, we're alive with him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one left out. No one left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep on doing it. And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. Get along among them yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on. Gently encourage the stragglers and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each other, attentive to individual needs, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. Don't suppress the spirit and don't stifle those who have a word from the master. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out everything or anything tainted with evil. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Ooh, yes. Friends, keep up your prayers for us. Greet all the followers of Jesus there with a holy embrace and make sure this letter gets read to all the brothers and sisters. Don't leave anyone out. The amazing grace of Jesus Christ be with you. I'm gonna start 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I, Paul, together with Silas and Timothy, greet the church of the Thessalonian Christians in the name of God, our Father and our Master, Jesus Christ. Our God gives you everything you need, makes you everything you're to be. You need to know, friends, that thanking God over and over for you is not only a pleasure, it's a must. We have to do it. Your faith is growing phenomenally. Your love for each other is developing wonderfully. Why, it's only right that we give thanks. 
We're so proud of you. You're so steady and determined in your faith, despite all the hard times that have broadsided you. We tell everyone we meet in the churches all about you. All this trouble is a clear sign that God has decided to make you fit for the kingdom. Did you hear that? All this trouble is a clear sign that God has decided to make you fit for the kingdom. You're suffering now, but Jesus is on the way. When the master Jesus appears out of heaven in a, in a blaze of fire with his strong angels, he'll even up the score by settling accounts with those who gave you such a bad time. His coming will be the break we've been waiting for. Those who refuse to know God and refuse to obey the message will pay for what they've done. Eternal exile from the presence of the master and his splendid power is their sentence. But on that very same day when he comes, he will be exalted by his followers and celebrated by all who believe. And all because you believed what we told you. Because we know that this extraordinary day is just ahead. We pray for you all the time. Pray that our God will make you fit for what he's called you to be. Pray that he'll fill your good ideas and acts of faith with his own energy so that it all amounts to something. If your life honors the name of Jesus, he will honor you. Grace is behind and through all of this. Our God, give, our God giving himself freely. The master, Jesus Christ, giving himself freely. I'm going to end there, you guys. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 is where they will start back. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for a great Monday. Help us to have a renewed vision, a renewed uh, sense of purpose, um, maybe a new purpose. Maybe we don't know what our purpose is, but our purpose is to be loved by you and to love others. So Father, help us to do that. Help us to see, to see, spiritually see, and just, and physically that um, you have things for us to do. And I know I harp on that all the time, God, but I know that you have specific gifts and talents inside of each one of us that we're supposed to use on a daily basis. Not these big necessarily big events, God. These individual, small, what may seem insignificant to, to most people are big, huge opportunities that you give us. Lord, help us to want to... Help us to want to love on each other and to give us the increased capacity to do so, Father. Lord, we love you. I ask for special blessings on everyone that's hearing the sound of my voice right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Empower them. Help us. Shoot, I don't want to leave myself out, Father. Empower me, Lord, to do the things that you called us all to do today. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen and amen. Hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded. Get this out on your page. And thank you so much for joining us this Monday morning. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day.